every coin has two sides. Previously, we've spoken about hiring. Today, we're going to find out about firing with George Hallou and Kat Paz. Now, to be clear, we're going to be discussing the decision and the best way to manage the firing situation, not the legalities and the paperwork, all Mm. that kind of stuff. So... Firing, aside from the usual serious breaches of contract, which is a no brainer for firing, when should you be considering cutting someone loose and when shouldn't you? George, tell us about that. Well, when someone is demonstrating that they're not really engaged in their role and you're needing them to perform and create outcomes that will keep their role sustainable. I think you have to face the fact that if, you, if you're if you not able to give them a way to become sustainable in a timely manner, you're actually jeopardising your business. And you, you have to let them go. Mm. You talk about it, they're um, not engaged with their business. What if they are engaged? They're just not performing. So in other words, they're trying really hard. They, they really want to, and you can see that. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's where you need to look at what they're doing and how they're going about that those tasks. And your business actually needs to take responsibility for training and processes that do create the positive outcomes. So therefore, um, if they're trying really hard, then what is it? And you mm. need to critically analyse um, what you need to do as a business to help them do it differently for for the results you expect and they would want. So before you even consider firing someone, there's another step that we really need to look at, isn't there? And that's we need to do that, uh, an assessment. Yes. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think that's a good idea, actually. Yeah, and look, I I often end up in situations where I'm asked, George, how can we fire this person? And then I find out that they have mismanaged that person for so long, it's like, here's the ugly baby, can we put a pretty ribbon on it? (laughs) Can we fire this person nicely with no consequences? And it just, it's just so sad that, you know, it, this happens so often. So Um, eliminating any discomfort rather than addressing it. It's like, I want this pain to go away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Because, but, but you're just transferring the pain, really. It's mm. gone from the business to the person. To the person. But yeah, the scapegoat. business yeah. is no better for it, I suppose. Because they're not addressing the real responsibility, which is them. Yeah, nobody's really learned anything mm. from the process, have they? Well, that's right. And Kat, what happens is that you end up hiring the next person. Yep. And apparently they're not good either. And the cycle continues and it's never your fault. It's this always happens a hard lot. to get good people. Yeah, yeah, but it's not really about that, nor is it no. firing. It's about doing that assessment and finding out what the problem is. Yeah, look, um, I know we're going into, we're starting to lean into the the prevention mm. and that's, we will go back to firing. But if you just realise that, yes, you can find people right enough to invest in, but you have to inspire and develop the right out of them in the role, you're not going to find the right people at, that are going to just gift you automatic outcomes with no effort from your part. No one's perfect. So we need to always have this attitude that if someone's not working out, um, then we need to develop them and always invest in them. But you can't hire people that aren't right enough so that you invest a lot of resources yes. and then you end up wasting a lot of that time and money and then they don't work out and that will literally put you under if if you're doing that. That's worse, isn't it? Because you've spent money on pretty much a lemon. It's so disheartening, a lemon, yes. (laughs) A lemon with a ribbon. With sour outcomes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So, okay, let's talk about some of the situations where it might not be working out. There might be like a, a grinding of gears with somebody that you're thinking about firing or, you know... Considering it. So how about we've got somebody that they, they're really good at their job, they're just not gelling with the team. Mm. What do you do mm. in that situation? I, I always go neutral and fact find. So because you don't know what's causing it. Sometimes you've got pack mentality. You've, oh, got, yes. you've got people, territorial, new person on the block, and they feel threatened 
especially if that person actually shows a lot of potential. Mm. So the last thing you want to do is fall for the trap of hearing their stories and not digging deeper because it means the insecurity of your team is literally keeping stars from helping you grow in your business because they're protecting their turf. You know, I think I've I've seen that a few times uh, with a couple of friends, actually, where they start working, they feel this is the right job for them, but they feel left out. Like, they almost have to work hard to join the pack, the club. Mm. And, and then, of course, they end up leaving, and everyone's just angry. But they always mention that they feel that it's the um, the long term employees that push them to the fringe, and they have no leg to stand on because they're buddies with everybody. Yeah, seemingly. So, so I get that what you're saying that they're just not heard, and you have to really fact find first. You do, and then when you do, you end up discovering either um, they're not given them. A chance. Mm. They're not supporting them while they're trying to uh, find their way with everything that's new. Yep. And you may find also that that person is actually not doing themselves any favors in the way they're going about it as well. So it gives you an opportunity to not only address your work culture, but it helps you know how that person can be guided to be different as well so that they can work out. I like that. Yeah, guided to be different. That's um, really useful. It's really good. You know? yeah. yeah, but if if that person, if you find out that that person is proving to be uh, unsupportive, playing games, mm. and undermining the rest of the work culture, and they and there you do have a good work culture, and you do discover that, then that's the time to help them know exactly what it takes to stay. And then start giving them professional, respectful, I have to say this, compassionate warning letters <laughs> if they don't change so that eventually they know they're working themselves out of the position so that by the time you fire them, they're not surprised and they know they sabotaged. Now, you've talked about this investigative process. Is this – because I've, I don't think I've ever seen a manager do this. Is this yeah. something a manager should do or an HR person or do you need to be, you know, have a degree in team building and who who can do this? Because I've never seen anyone do it. Well, that's sad, isn't it? Like mm. it should be everywhere, people caring about the truth. So I say, look, in um, a lot of corporations, they call it going five wise deep. So – Whatever's going on, ask why is that's going on, and then you'll come up with answers. But then those answers, you apply the same thing. You say, why is that happening? And then mm-hmm. you'll go deeper again. If you discipline yourself to ask why at least five times, you're going to get to root causes. Now, why do we need a degree for that? Why do we need to escalate it to high levels of management? Yep. Why can't the people dealing with the issues – Enjoy going five wise deep so that we're all addressing root causes and and creating meaningful change and and building a platform to to thrive together. Yeah. No, that's true. Um, We we talked about hiring before and how you said briefly that um, there's the probationary period and then somehow they drop the ball and that's when you start to see these problems happen when the probationary period is over and maybe that's it going five wise deep mm. would help you help that person get back on track in a timely manner and Absolutely. not just a knee jerk out of a job that was potentially the best thing for them and look i think we should have a healthy assumption when a staff member is struggling and we're thinking firing is the option, Mm. we should assume one thing. Innately, they are good and they want to be of value. If we assume that, then we've earned the right to be very confused with anything that's going on that conflicts with that. And if you confront someone seeking to understand rather than prejudging that they're incompetent or they have a bad attitude, you leave room to discover a lot of things that would help you and them align 
And people appreciate you when you believe in them, when you believe in their good nature. So when you say, what's going on? What am I missing here? Because this happened, that happened. But I know that you, you're you here to do a great job. Then they then they're, they feel safe enough to open up and they feel safe enough to admit things that then they're grounded enough in their issues and you're equipped now with the truth to help them really deal with it. So what kind of training is this? Like, what what, what would you call it? Because... Is it is it a conflict resolution? How do you teach people to to think five wise deep? It's a discipline that needs practicing. So um, that's what I do. You know, like for my clients and, and in business situations, you learn that as a discipline. Mm. Um, a lot of people are raised with that discipline, and so. But philosophically, you have to actually shift your worldview. You see, a lot of people get disillusioned and they think that people are just going to take advantage of you. People are just going to be lazy, yeah? Yeah, because but, you're young, you're the new graduate, you know, hell, you're female. Yeah. So um, rarely is it that someone just wants to sabotage because they're bored and they don't care and they just <laughs> want to be abandoned and, and pushed away. <laughs> Yeah, that's, okay. yeah, yeah, you're I'm right. I'm going to put a suit on in you the know? morning to be abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hi, I've got this job and I just can't wait. I just can't wait to stuff it up and undermine everything so you can um, push me out and I can just have to find another job and, and, and struggle with my bills. Just I just can't means. wait. <laughs> so, yeah, what do you want me to do so I know what not to do? <laughs> mm, that is true. People people are generally doing a job and they want to be valued for it and they want to do a good job of their job. Yeah. Which is, um, yeah, I guess if we use that as a basic guiding principle. Mm. Um, so it, we we have the conversation. We, we figure out what's going on, you know, put some principles and practice or whatever, what mm-hmm. we can do. If that, if that person still isn't performing. Yes. Then what's the next step? It's probably the good old warning letter. Yeah. Look, the thing is, though, if you feel... And you're very confident that the process you've given is within their reach to implement. In other words, pick up the phone. Mm. Here's a script, a guide to engage that client. Yeah. Mm. Um, Do it six times an hour. (laughs) You know, in other words, if you've quantified their role that clearly and they're not actioning things that are within their means, it's very easy to give a warning letter to that. A compassionate warning letter. Yeah, that's, this is great. A compassionate, rather than yes, rather than just. A, a, I got a, it from George earlier. I was like, compassionate warning letters. Absolutely. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Because yeah. like that, they they are sabotaging themselves. Why wouldn't you feel sorry for them that they're caught in a situation mm. where they are devaluing themselves for all the wrong reasons? They're agreeing with you on doing certain things that you're asking them. Is it clear? They're saying yes, and then they don't like. Why wouldn't you feel sorry for someone who's caught? Because you know what? You don't know what's going on in their world. Mm. You don't know whether they are having domestic abuse or or whatever's going on in their world that makes them overthink um, and and complicate simple things in front of them. Yes, they're making themselves um, incompetent, right? But yes, you're not responsible for that. But that doesn't mean you need to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Do you like the running theme here? Yeah, I do. You don't need to, (laughs) right? You can still be humane about it and care for the fact that this person must be lost and in trouble to be not doing this. So, of course, that letter is genuinely compassionate. And, you know, when you're saying things like, I don't know why this is happening. All I know is it doesn't make sense. I've tried this, 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 this. You've agreed with me in all these ways, and yet it still is happening. So can I just say that I really hope this letter will motivate you to change because I want you to know it's getting serious, whatever it takes. And if you feel like you haven't been open with me on some things that might explain it and you're ready to work on this, I'm all ears, but this is the first warning letter. Wow. Yeah. You know, wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and like, you know, for, uh, a warning letter is often is a form letter. Yeah. And it's in, in really formal language and it's got no personality. And the air is thick, isn't it? It's yeah. like, Jane, do you have two seconds? <laughs> like, on, like, it's not even like there's something, something you want to talk to me about. But it's not even that. They, they're usually very impersonal. Very imp- they're a form letter, uh, you, basically. You want, a, you want a good one? Oh. I, I had a big um, tragedy in my life, but my father came good 
after an accident where he was in the brain injury unit for three months, right? My life was a bit of a wreck. Every day I'm at that hospital, every day. Mm. And it just stuffed me around. And I was working in radio at the time in Sydney, funny that. And I I became um, disillusioned and I wasn't focused on work. So that actually my performance suffered. Then my dad was coming good and I got back into work. Mm. And for three months solid, I kid you not, guys, I was a man possessed, (laughs) focused on everything. And then suddenly I could tell everything starting to surge back, right? As it was surging back after three months of being a man on a mission, Mm. I got a warning letter. What? For... The three months earlier. Oh, no. See, now that's throwing the baby with the bathwater. <laughs> that's, that's throwing everything, including yes. the tub, <laughs> out the window. <laughs> and I just couldn't believe it. And I was so angry that they would want to not see what's in front of them, you know. And But I felt sorry for my manager because the pressure was coming from above him. Yeah, and he, was, yes. he felt like he had to cover his tracks to show that he's got some still resolve about him. And I saw the fear in his eyes. So I didn't feel like... I wished he was more c- courageous than that. Mm. But, you know, at the end of the day, he was a good guy. And I just took a deep breath and thought, okay, so they're idiots. So what? I just get on with, with showing them that they gave me a, a warning letter in vain... And I just got on with it. And that's probably a good message for everyone out there who is mistreated. Dig deeper and think to yourself, what is the ultimate result here? No one's perfect, mm. including your managers, including your, the business owners. No one's perfect. We're all, you know, I joke about this. We're all retarded. Okay? <laughs> that includes me. And so if you lower the bar a little bit, maybe we can be a little bit more compassionate to each other and be there for each other. And not be afraid because we've made a mistake. Yeah? Yeah. Can I ask a question about that situation? About being retarded. We, that too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite get that. Um, no, I, you know, when, when you were struggling with your personal issue, did they actually check, check in on you when you came back? Because you were... were, were and you... I was still at work and I was still just doing enough to mm. keep the wheels turning, but but my overall performance was, was suffering and it was pushing me into t- the wrong direction. Okay, so... Was it, it was more reactive, you would say, like you were just trying to shake yourself out of it? No, I was just unmotivated. Mm. And then suddenly when I saw the results were not impressive, I realized that this was going to hurt me and, the, and, my, and my role in the company. Mm. I wasn't performing it. So I, it coincided with my dad getting better and I jolted out of it. And so I was feeling good and I saw the consequences of, you know, yeah, that's what happened. So as a manager, you cannot assume that this person should know better because, you, like you said, you don't know what's at home. Yeah, but the thing is, it's not like they didn't know. Mm. They knew. But also, fairness to them, they need to protect their business. Like, yes. if I choose to be disillusioned indefinitely, then, then they're going to have to sack me because, I, you know, they need to replace me with someone else that look after the clients and whatever. But, yeah, like, but the whole point was you don't give someone a warning letter like – after they've already demonstrated they've moved beyond it? Beyond it. That's crazy. Yeah, it's not It's not really achieving anything. The, yes. Yeah. Mm. Did they, I'm guessing that they understood that you were having issues with your family? Yeah, they knew. That? They knew my dad had yeah. a terrible accident. He was in, yeah. you know, he was in a coma for three days. Wow. And, you know, it was really bad. He didn't even, he, he, he had no memory, you know, like it was, it was bad for a while. And then he got better slowly, mm. you know. Yeah, but we all of us have those little traumas or other other priorities oh, yeah. in our life, whatever that is. And uh, yeah, people need to understand that, and give, we we need to do that for everyone. Give each other a bit of slack, don't I we? I think more yeah. so now that we're becoming more multicultural in Australia. Um, I was looking at those census numbers, and I was like, we're we're changing as a country. I mean, I personally stay up to talk to family mm. at night, and whereas other people don't have to do that, but that does affect people's engagement here, real time. Hmm. So I'm just hearing we need to be more human about these things. Um, We do, and I think what happens is we go through extremes. So in other words, we're too soft. We avoid confronting the issues in front of us with staff. And then it gets worse and worse. Mm. And then we're so fed up, we act in the most despicable way. So we're doormats, and then we become volcanoes and erupt. On the other side, what happens? 
we're trigger happy. Mm. We're bef- you know, we're we're assuming the worst in people before we even understand. That's and then, it. you know, like, yeah, we need to keep that that middle ground before we even get to the firing. I think we're going to do firing another time, but because this is more about understanding uh, the problems that could cause people to underperform and talk about warning letters. And yeah. this has been a great conversation. It has. I thought firing was a necessity to be almost so aggressive and direct uh, to get your point across. But then you're not looking at the person as being human. Well, what's amazing is that you can fire someone in a, such a amazing way that they'll leave. Even if they had to leave, they'll look back on you with respect with the mm-hmm. way you treated them. Mm-hmm. I think we need to talk about that. We're going to go do another show about yes. actually firing, not just warning letters. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kat and George. Thank you. Thank you.